السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وی ویلکم آل آف یو ٹو دس ایتھ ڈے ایوننگ سیشن آف دا ٹین ڈے انٹرنیشنل اسلامک کانفرنس اینڈ ایگزیبیشن وی بگن ٹو ڈے سیشن ود دا خیرات بائی شیخ صلاح عبد الرحمٰن البخاطر فرام یو اے السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر وَإِن يَرَوْا آيَةً يُعْرِضُوا وَيَقُولُوا سِحْرٌ مُسْتَمِرٌ وَكَذَّبُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا أَهْوَاءَهُمْ وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ مُسْتَقِرٌ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَنْبَاءِ مَا فِيهِ مُزْدَجَرٌ حكمة بالغة فما تغني النذر فتول عنهم يوم يدعو الداعي إلى شيء نكر خش عن أبصارهم يخرجون من الأجدات كأنهم يخرجون من الأجدات كأنهم جراد منتشر مهطعين إلى الداع يقول الكافرون هذا يوم عسر كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح فكذبوا عبدنا وقالوا مجنون وازدجر وقالوا مجنون وازدجر فدعا ربه أني مغلوب فانتصر ففتحنا أبواب السماء بماء منهمر وفجرنا الأرض عيونا فالتقى الماء على أمر قد قدر وحملناه على ذات ألواح وجسر تجري بأعيننا جزاء لمن كان كفر ولقد تركناها آية فهل من مدكر فكيف كان عذابي ونذر ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر كذبت عاد فكيف كان عذابي ونذر إنا أرسلنا عليهم ريحا صرصرا ريحا صرا في يوم نحس مستمر تنزع الناس كأنهم أعجاز نخل منقعر فكيف كان عذابي ونذر ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر كذبت ثمود بالنذر فقالوا أبشرا من واحدا نتبعه نتبعه إنا إذا لفي ضلال وسعر ألقي الذكر عليه من بيننا بل هو كذاب أشر سيعلمون غدا من الكذاب الأشر إنا مرسل قد فتنة لهم فارتقبهم واصطبر
ونبئهم أن الماء قسمة بينهم كل شرب محتضر فنادوا صاحبهم فتعاطى فعقر فكيف كان عذابي ونذر إنا أرسلنا عليهم صيحة واحدة فكانوا كهشيم المحتضر ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر كذبت قوم لوط بالنذر إنا أرسلنا عليهم حاصبا إلا آل لوط إلا آل لوط نجيناهم بسحر نعمة من عندنا كذلك نجزي من شكر ولقد أنذرهم بطشتنا فتماروا بالنذر ولقد راودوه عن ضيفه فطمسنا أعينهم فذوقوا عذابي ونذر ولقد صبحهم بكرة عذاب مستقل فذوقوا عذابي ونذر ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر ولقد جاء آل فرعون النذر كذبوا بآياتنا كلها فأخذناهم فأخذناهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر أكفاركم خير من أولئكم أم لكم براءة في الزبر أم يقولون نحن جميع منتصر سيهزم الجمع ويولون الدبر بل الساعة موعدهم والساعة أدهى وأمر إن المجرمين في ضلال وسعر يوم يسحبون في النار على وجوههم ذوقوا مس سقر إنا كل شيء خلقناه بقدر وما أمرنا إلا واحدة كلمح بالبصر ولقد أهلكنا أشياعكم فهل من مدكر وكل شيء فعلوه في الزبر وكل صغير وكبير مستطر إن المتقين في جنات ونهر في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر جزاك الله شيك بخاتر Now we have the translation of the Karat being presented by Brother Jamal Richards from London, United Kingdom. Brother Jamal. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, the hour has come near and the moon has split in two. And if they see a sign, they turn away and say, pass in magic. And they denied and followed their inclinations, but for every matter is a time of settlement. And there has already come to them of information that in which there is deterrence. Extensive wisdom, but warning does not avail them. So leave them, O Muhammad, the day the caller calls to something forbidden. 
Their eyes humbled, they will emerge from the graves as if they were locusts spreading. Racing ahead towards the caller, the disbelievers will say, this is a difficult day. The people of Noah denied before them, and they denied our servant and said, a madman, and he was repelled. So he invoked his Lord, indeed I am overpowered, so help. Then we opened the gates of the heaven with rain pouring down and caused the earth to burst with springs and the waters met for a matter already predestined. And we carried him on a construction of planks and nails, sailing under our observation as reward for he who had been denied. And we left it as a sign. So is there any who will remember? And how severe were my punishment and warning. And we have certainly made the Quran easy for remembrance. So is there any who will remember? And Ad denied, and how severe were my punishment and warning. Indeed, we sent upon them a screaming wind on a day of continuous misfortune, extracting the people as if they were trunks of palm trees uprooted. And how severe were my punishment and warning. And we have certainly made the Quran easy for remembrance. So is there any who will remember? Thamud denied the warning and said, is it one human being among us that we should follow? Indeed, we would then be in error and madness. Has the message been sent down upon him from among us? Rather, he is an insolent liar. Indeed, we are sending the she-camel as a trial for them, so watch them and be patient, and inform them that the water is shared between them, each day of drink attended by turn. But they called their companion, and he dared, and hamstrung her. And how severe were my punishment and warning. Indeed, we sent upon them one shriek, a blast from the sky, and they became like the dry twig fragments of an animal pen. And we have certainly made the Quran easy for remembrance. So is there any who will remember? The people of Lot denied the warning. Indeed, we sent upon them a storm of stones, except the family of Lot. We saved them before dawn. As favor from us, thus do we reward he who is grateful. And he had already warned them of our assault, but they disputed the warning. And they demanded from him his guests, but we obliterated their eyes, saying, taste my punishment and warning. And there came upon them by morning an abiding punishment. So taste my punishment and warning. And we have certainly made the Quran easy for remembrance. So is there any who will remember? And there certainly came to the people of Pharaoh warning. They denied our signs, all of them, so we seized them with a seizure of exalted in might and perfect in ability. Are your disbelievers better than those former ones, or have you immunity in the scriptures? Or do they say, we are an assembly supporting each other? Their assembly will be defeated, and they will turn their backs in retreat. But the hour is their appointment for due punishment, and the hour is more disastrous and more bitter. Indeed, the criminals are in error and madness. The day they are dragged into the fire on their faces, it will be said, taste the touch of succor. Indeed, all things we created with predestination. And our command is but one like a glance of the eye. And we have already destroyed your kinds. So is there any who will remember? And everything they did is in written records. And every small and great thing is inscribed. Indeed, the righteous will be among gardens and rivers, in a seat of honor near a sovereign perfect in ability. Jazakallah khair, Brother Jamal Richards, for your translation. Now we start the formal public talk session.
Our speaker for today needs no introduction to many present here, but for those who would not know about him, I present the formal introduction. Dr. Zakir Naik is the president of the Islamic Research Foundation, a medical doctor by professional training. He is renowned as a dynamic international orator on Islam and comparative religion. Dr. Zakir clarifies Islamic viewpoints and clears misconceptions about Islam using the Quran, authentic Hadith, and other religious scriptures in conjunction with reason, logic, and scientific facts. He's 44 years old. Dr. Zakir is popular for his critical analysis and convincing answers to challenging questions posed by audiences and critics after his public talks. In the last 13 years, Dr. Zakir has delivered more than 1,300 public talks in faraway places as USA, Canada, UK, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, South Africa, Italy, Mauritius, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, Guyana, South America, Trinidad and Tobago, and many other countries, in addition to numerous public talks in India, too. He has successfully participated in several symposia and dialogues with prominent personalities of other faiths. The late Sheikh Ahmad Didat, the world-famous orator on Islam and comparative religion, a pioneer in his field, who had called Dr. Zakir Didat Plus in 1994, presented a plaque in May 2000 with an engraved citation on it, awarded to Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik for his achievement in the field of Dawa and the study of comparative religion. And he went on further to say, son, what you have done in the last four years had taken me 40 years to accomplish, alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakir appears regularly on many international television channels in more than 200 countries worldwide. He's regularly invited for TV and radio interviews. Hundreds of his talks, dialogues, debates, and symposia are available on VCDs, DVDs, and other digital and internet media. Peace TV is his passionate and professional far-reaching presentation of Islam to Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide. He has authored books on Islam and comparative religion, the more popular ones being Quran and Modern Science, Compatible or Incompatible, Women's Rights in Islam, Protected or Subjugated, Concept of God in Major Religions, and Answers to Non-Muslims, Common Questions about Islam. Brothers and sisters, to speak to us today on a vital topic, Al-Qur'an, should it be read with understanding? May I present before you Dr. Zakir Naik. Alhamdulillah. Was salatu was salam. Ala Rasulillah wa ala ali wa sabi ajmain. Amma bad. Auzu billahi min shaitani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walakad yassar na al Quran al zikri. Fahal min mudakir. Rabbi shali sadri. Wa yassili amri. Wahalu al ugdat min lisan yafkau kauli. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is Al Quran, should it be read with understanding? The glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, which was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The glorious Quran 
is the most positive book in the world. It is a proclamation to humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It is a guide to the erring. It is a warning to the heedless, an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering, and it is a hope to those in despair. How is it possible to derive all these benefits of the Quran without reading the Quran, without understanding the Quran, without pondering over the meaning of the Quran, and without implementing the Quran in your life? Alhamdulillah, the glorious Quran is the most widely read book in the world. But unfortunately, it is also the book which is most widely read without understanding. Because the majority of the Muslims read the Quran without understanding, that's the reason the contact, the benefit that the Muslims derive from the Quran, it has decreased. The touch of the Muslims with the Quran has declined. Imagine, if a person comes to the Quran and he goes away empty-handed, hearts untouched, soul unmoved, and the life unchanged. What a tragic misfortune it is. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhridat linnas. O ye Muslims, ye are the best of people the world for mankind. Ta'mirunna bil marufi wa tanhawna il munkar wa tu'minunna billah. Because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. Allah is calling us the Muslims, the khaira ummah, the best of people evolved for humankind. And the reason he's giving us is because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. If we Muslims read the Quran without understanding, how can we enjoin what is good and forbid what is wrong? And if we do not enjoin what is good and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we aren't fit to be called as Muslims. We aren't fit to be called as Khaira Ummah. So if we want to be called as Khaira Ummah, if we want to be Muslims, we have to read the Quran with understanding so that we can enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. The Arabic word Quran is derived from the Arabic word Qara, which means book. It's also derived from the Arabic word Ikra, which means to read, which means to recite, which means to proclaim. How can we proclaim the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without understanding the message? And another title given to Quran is Furqan. That is the criteria to judge right from wrong. We can only judge between right and wrong if we understand the message of the Quran. Without understanding the message of the Quran, it's not possible that we can use the Quran as the Furqan, as the criteria to judge between right and wrong. Let's analyze today the various excuses given by us Muslims for not reading the Quran with understanding. The most common excuse is we do not know Arabic as a language. Today, the world population is approximately 6 billion and about 20 to 25% of the world population are Muslim. About 1.3 to 1.5 billion Muslims are there in the world. And out of the Muslim population, approximately 15% are Arabs. And there are very few non-Arabs who understand Arabic as a language. So amongst the Muslim population, more than 80% of the Muslims, they don't understand Arabic as a language. So the most common excuse that we Muslims have not to read the Quran with understanding is we do not know Arabic as a language. When a human being is born, he does not know any language. The child, he initially learns the mother tongue so that he can converse with the family members. Later on, he may learn the language of the society so that 
he could communicate with the people around him. He may learn the language in which he is educated. Almost all the human beings, they at least know two or three different languages. Some know three to five languages. Some are linguists. But most of the human beings, almost all, they at least know two to three different languages. Isn't it a requirement that we should know the language in which our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed His last and final message, the glorious Quran? Isn't it a must that we Muslims should learn Arabic as a language to understand the Quran? I know that it is much easier for a person to learn a language during childhood. But age is never a barrier to prevent any human being from doing any good work. And that reminds me of the example of Dr. Morris Bukail. Many of you may be aware that Dr. Morris Bukail was a very famous surgeon and scientist who was given the French Academy Award in Medicine. And Dr. Morris Bukail, he was selected for doing research on the mummy of Manapta, that is, the mummy of the body of Pharaoh, who was there at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, which is mentioned in the Bible. And after he did research on this mummy of Manapta, which was found in the Valley of Kings, he being a Christian, he was aware of the background mention of Moses, peace be upon him, in the Bible. And he was aware that the Pharaoh at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, when he followed Moses, peace be upon him, when he parted the sea, and when he followed him, the sea again came back to normal, and the Pharaoh had drowned. But when he went to Saudi Arabia, there he learned that the Muslims told him that the Quran already mentions in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 92, that Allah says, we shall save the body of the Pharaoh as a sign for posterity. Dr. Morris Bukail, he was shocked that how does this book, the glorious Quran, 1400 years back says that Almighty God will save the body of Pharaoh as a sign for posterity, as a sign for humankind. And this is not mentioned in the Bible. So that instigated him to read the translation of the Quran. And after he read the translation of the Quran, he was so much inspired that he wanted to understand the Quran better. So at the age of 50, he learned Arabic as a language to understand the Quran better. Imagine a non-Muslim, a Christian. To understand the Quran better, he learns Arabic as a language. And after he does research, he says that the scientific points mentioned in the Quran are in perfect conformity with what modern science has discovered. And unfortunately, there are many things in the Bible which do not conform with modern science. And after doing further research, he writes a book, The Bible, the Quran and Science, which became very famous. The point to be noted here is, imagine a person of the age of 50, being a non-Muslim, being a Christian. To understand the Quran better, he learns Arabic as a language. So we Muslims, the best excuse we have is that we don't know Arabic as a language. I do not expect every Muslim to be as enthusiastic as Dr. Morris Bukhail, that they'd like to learn Arabic at the age of 50. But even if a Muslim does not know Arabic as a language, yet he has got no excuse, because he can yet read the translation of the Quran. And Alhamdulillah, the Quran has been translated into most of the major languages of the world. 
مولانا عبد المجد دریا بادی سیز دا قرآن is the most untranslatable book in the world the language of the Quran is so pure it is divine it is noble it is unsurpassable it is intelligible and that is the reason it makes Quran the most difficult book to translate not only does it make it the most difficult book to translate in fact it is a book which is impossible to translate yet alhamdulillah there are many scholars who have spent several years who have spent decades in doing research and have translated the glorious Quran into most of the major languages of the world even though I agree that no translation is 100% perfect because a translation is a human handiwork and the Arabic Quran is the word of Almighty God the Creator but in spite of that these translations at least they let us understand the basic message of the Quran the basic message of our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we Muslims we give excuses for not reading the translation of the Quran saying we are very busy we are very busy in our studies we are busy in our profession we are busy in our business most of us we have spent decades reading and memorizing volumes of books in schools and colleges as well as universities just to acquire a degree don't we have the time to read the message of our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how much time does it take to read the Quran our beloved Prophet Muhammad said it's a Sahih Hadith in Tirmidhi where he said that anyone who reads the Quran in less than three days he has not understood the Quran that means if we read the Quran with concentration it will minimum take a person three days minimum if you read a bit slowly it may take five days if you read one juz one part a day it will take you one month to read the Quran the degree that we acquire in the colleges and universities it may or may not help you in this world there are hundreds and thousands of graduates and postgraduates that I know that are jobless and the education you acquire in school colleges and universities if it does not get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it does not get you closer to your Creator Almighty God then this education is useless for the hereafter so the education that you get in the colleges in the schools and universities may or may not help you in this world and if it does not get you closer to your Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is useless in the hereafter but as far as the Quran is concerned Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 1 and 2 Alif Lam Meem Zalik al Kitab al Araibu Fi Hudal al Muttaqeen Alif Lam Meem this is a book of guidance without doubt for those who have taqwa for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that means Allah is giving us a promise that this book is a book of guidance and it will surely benefit you in this world as well as the hereafter Allah says in the Quran in Surah Kahaf chapter number 18 verse number 54 that this is a book which mentioned in detail many similitudes in which is benefit for humankind but men is in most things contentious Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Az-Zumur chapter number 39 verse number 27 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in detail many similitudes so that men may receive admonition if you read the Quran it will surely benefit you in this world as well as hereafter you read the Quran if you don't know Arabic read the Quran in the language you understand if you understand English read it in English the language you understand the best 
If you understand Urdu, read it in Urdu. If you understand Hindi, read it in Hindi. If you understand French, read it in French. If you understand German, read it in German. Read it in the language you understand, irrespective whether you read the English translation, the Urdu translation, the Hindi translation, the French translation, or German translation. At least read the translation of the glorious Quran so that you can understand the message of your creator. I'd like to give an example. Suppose a very close friend of yours, who's a German, he comes from Germany and he spends a couple of weeks with you in Bombay. He being a German, he can't speak English fluently, but he can converse with you. He spends a couple of weeks in Bombay and when he goes back to Germany, he writes to you a letter in German. Because he can't speak English fluently, he can't write English fluently, so he writes to you a letter in German. Now, when you get that letter in German, you don't understand German. What will you do? But natural, because he's a close friend, you will have that letter translated. You'll want to know what did your good friend tell you from Germany. You will have that letter translated. Don't you want to know what is the message, the last and final message given by our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You don't have to go and translate the Quran. The Quran, Alhamdulillah, has already been translated in the major languages of the world. Many Muslims, they think that the Quran was only revealed for the Muslims. And the Quran is not meant for the non-Muslims. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1, Alif Lam Ra. This is a book which Allah has revealed so that thou may guide us, the humankind, from the depths of darkness to light. Allah is telling that this book, the Quran, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that he could guide the humankind from the depths of darkness to light. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52, that here is a message for mankind. Let them take warning therefrom. Let them know there is one God. Let the men of understanding take heed. Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guide for humankind, as a criteria to judge right from wrong. So Quran is a book which was revealed in the month of Ramadan as a guide for the whole of humankind, not only for the Muslims or for the Arabs, but for the whole of humankind, as a criteria to judge right from wrong. Allah says in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 41, we have revealed the message to thee, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that thou may instruct the humankind. The Quran does not say that the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad so that he may instruct only the Muslims or the Arabs, so that he may instruct the whole of humankind. Yet, there are many Muslims who do not want to share the Quran with the non-Muslims, thinking, what will these non-Muslims understand the Quran? These non-Muslims, these mushriks, these kafir, what will they understand the Quran? Thinking that they are very superior. Do you know this Quran was revealed 1400 years ago? At a time, it was revealed in Arabia at a time which was known as Yom al Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. At that time, before the Quran was revealed, the Arabs were known as the most ignorant people of the world. And imagine this Quran has changed the lives of these Arabs and made them the torchbearers of the world. So when the Quran could change those people 1400 years ago, why can't the Quran change the non-Muslims of this time? These are not the days of ignorance. History tells us that was known as Yom al Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee not 
but as a mercy to the whole of humankind, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to all the worlds. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs. The last and final messenger was sent for the whole of humankind. The Quran says in chapter number 34, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَفَّةَ النَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا We have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings yet do not know. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humankind. We Muslims, we unfortunately want to sit on the Quran like a cobra. Neither do we read it, neither do we want the others to read it. And many of the Muslims, they quote the Quran, saying that Quran cannot be given to the non-Muslim because Allah says in the Quran, and they quote Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 77 to 80, where it says that this is the Quran which is kept in a tablet well preserved who none shall touch except those who are pure it is from the lord of the worlds and many muslims say that see the quran says none shall touch the quran except those who are pure and the non-muslims they are najis they are napak they are unclean that's the reason these non-muslims they cannot touch the quran if we read the nuzul e quran why were these verses revealed? We come to know that the mushriks and the kuffars of Makkah, they laid the allegation that this Quran, Nauz Billah, are the words of the Satan, the words of Shaitan. Allah reveals this, that none can touch. The Arabic word used is Kitab Maknoon. That means a book well preserved. Kitab Maknoon. This Kitab al Maknoon does not refer to this glorious Quran. This book, Quran, in Arabic is called as a Mus'haf. What the Quran is referring to, if we cross reference, of Surah Buruj, chapter number 85, verse number 21 22, which says that Allah has kept the Quran in a tablet well preserved in Lohe Mahfuz. So this Quran which is being referred is referred to the Lohe Mahfuz, the tablet well preserved, the book well preserved. It's not talking about this Quran. Because if it was this Quran, and if the Arabic word used mutahareen, that it means that only body cleanliness, then any non-Muslim can easily go to the marketplace and buy a copy of the Quran for 150 rupees, for 200 rupees, for four dollars, for five dollars and the Qur'an will be proved wrong. The mutahareen word used does not refer only to body cleanliness. It refers to a person who is pure in heart, in mind, in soul, person who is sinless, referring to the angels, that none will be able to touch the Qur'an in the tablet well preserved, Lohe Mehfuz, except the angels trying to give a reply to the allegation of the mushriks of Makkah that this Quran was not the words of the Satan. So this verse of the Quran does not indicate that a person should be pure in body. If he is, it's good. It is mustaf, alhamdulillah. But it's not a must. And furthermore, even if it was a requirement, imagine, even if it was a requirement, if a person's shirk can be removed from his life, even if you consider this as a small mistake to touch the Quran without wudu, yet removing the shirk, which is the biggest sin in Islam, to do a small mistake, to remove the biggest sin in Islam, it is yet a very good bargain. But the scholars of Tafsir, they say, this verse does not refer and does not indicate 
that a person should be in wudu to touch the Quran. But being in wudu is good. It is mustahab, alhamdulillah, but not a must. There are many people, many Muslims who tell me, okay, Brother Zakir, give the Quran to the non-Muslim, but only give the English translation. Don't give the Arabic text. Or give the Hindi translation, the Urdu translation. I've got no problem if someone only gives the translation of the Quran, but I personally prefer giving the Arabic text along with the translation. Why? Because the translation is the work of a human being. And no human being is perfect. As I mentioned earlier, that no translation is perfect. And if there is a mistake in the translation, it will not be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we check it up with the Arabic text, besides the translation, we can easily verify that if there's a mistake in the translation, it is the work of the human being and not of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I personally prefer giving along with the translation the Arabic text so that if there is a mistake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll not be responsible. It is the responsibility of the translator. And furthermore, if Allah holds me responsible, I will be in good company. I'll be in the company of the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Why? Because if you read the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi he dictated letters to non-Muslim kings in which he dictated verses of the Quran. He told the Sahabas, he dictated letters to non-Muslim kings in which he dictated verses of the Quran. He sent letters to Nicholas of Abyssinia, to Emperor Heracles, Emperor of Persia, King of Yemen, King of Egypt. Many of these kings, Alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam. But some of them, they even tore the letter. Some of them even trampled it beneath their feet. Imagine the verses of the Quran dictated by the Prophet. They were torn by these kings, and some of them even trampled it beneath their feet. And one such letter is available in the Koptaki Museum in Turkey, in which the Prophet had dictated the verse of the Quran of Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul, ya hilal kitab. Say, O people of the book, Ta'alo ila kalimatin sawa im bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bihi shayyaw. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhida baadun abaadun arbaabun minun illah. That we erect not among ourselves. Lords and patrons other than Allah. Pantawallo. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu. Say be witness. Be anna muslimun. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the Quran was dictated to the non-Muslim kings by the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's yet available in the museum, the Koptaki Museum in Turkey. And I want to ask you the question. Today, there are about 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians, who are Christians since generations. I'm asking you the question, which translation of the Quran will you give to these 14 million Coptic Arab Christians? Do you want to translate the Arabic Quran into Arabic again? You'll have to give the original text. To these Christian Arabs who understand Arabic as a language, Arabic is the mother tongue. Which translation will you give? Will you give the Urdu translation? Will you give the English translation? You have to give the original kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arabic. That's the reason I personally prefer, along with the translation, give the original Arabic text. And the Quran was revealed for the whole of humankind and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger to the whole of humankind. There are many Muslims who say that the Quran is meant to be read with understanding only by the alims, only by the scholars. A layman Muslim should not try to understand the Quran. The Quran is meant to be read with understanding only by the alims, only by the scholars. 
I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Quran, which is also recited by the Qari in the beginning of the program, which occurs in Surah Qamar, chapter number 54, no less than four times. Surah Qamar, chapter 54, verse number 17, verse number 22, verse number 32, and verse number 40. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرَانَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَحَلْ مِمُدَّقِرْ We have made the Quran easy for you to understand and memorize. Then which of you shall not receive admonition? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, says that we have made the Quran easy for you to understand. Then which of you shall not receive admonition? Allah says in the Quran in several places, in several verses, including Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 242. La So that they will understand. Allah says in Surah Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 1, Alif, Lam, Ra. Tilka ayatul kitab. Wal Quran al mubin That Alif, Lam, Ra. These are the verses of the Quran that make things clear to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this Quran, we have made it easy for you to understand. Allah says, so that they understand. Allah says, we have revealed the verse of the Quran so that it will make things clear to you. So who will you obey? Who will you follow? Those Muslims who say that the Quran was only meant for the scholars to understand it, or should we follow the guidance of the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it was made easy for the human beings to understand.